This week's challenge is all about turning over new leaves. Down that page, we all have New Year's resolutions and ideas what we'd like to do the following year. So now is the opportunity to do them. Um, whether or not it's something you fancy do photography wise doing and you haven't done it, or if you think somebody else is interested in doing it perhaps, drop me a line and let me know and I'll see what I can do. Um, there's loads of things this year we can do together. Um, I know we're still under lockdown. Uh, I'm trying to aim for things we, we can do inside as well as outside. Um, this today is called Turn a New Leaf because it's beginning the new year. Um, so anything which is leaf related, um, we could do a li normal leaf of a tree, stick it on a window and take the same picture in the morning just as the sun's come up and see how the colours change. So if you stick it on a window and you've got a fairly short field of depth and you've got a glass window behind it, um, you'll get the ambient colours come up. So if you get red mornings, you get a, a leaf with a nice red board around it or if it's a just grey morning, um, you're not going to get a lot. <laughs> um, but there's the, chain, the light is different every morning. So it's just ideas to what you can do. Uh, the main challenge is or well, not the main challenge, but the easier challenge to do. Well, it's not an easier challenge, it's different. Um, we can use books. Books is an incredible amount of things you can do with books. Um, and you don't even need to go outside to do them. You've probably got through a few recently. Um, so I've got some ideas what we can do with a few books. Um, obviously, if you come up with some new you know, ideas yourself, then that'd be great. Idea number one. As you can see, I've just set some books up on the table and uh, I have a uh, little thinking man, a uh, little wooden chap, and he's sitting on the book there between, as you can see, and the camera's focused in on the man through the book. So obviously if you focus in on him and then turn the focus off um, and the idea is it's actually shooting through the books. Um, obviously it's quite, if you do it in colour, try doing it then in black and white or converting it afterwards. I think black and white's going to work really well like this. Um, if you've got a remote shutter, uh, I'll just turn the camera on. Um, A remote shutter and the camera's on the tripod it leaves your hands to do free also if the light I've set the, the settings for this I've put on AV and I've put it on ISO 200 so it's quite good quality still uh, but it's on a tripod um, there's no reason why it can't be good quality um, f22 because I want everything from front to back in field of depth you could go less um, but what I wanted to try getting was all the edges of the books nice and sharp and my character here nice and sharp. Obviously you could go slightly less but don't go too mad. Um, I wouldn't go any below about F8. Um, but So obviously if you use the remote control shutter, right, I'm going to trigger it off now. And it's on a tripod. There's no movement. ISO 200. Uh, I've put it on F22, um, but really you could go less than that. But this is just to demonstrate, I've used a remote trigger and the camera's on a tripod. And it's actually still exposing. So if I'd been hand holding that, it would have been wobbling all over the shop. But since I had, there you go. As you can see, the picture's come up really nice. Um, but with a remote shutter, I'm not touching it, and it's on the tripod. So some of those things doesn't it doesn't matter if there's movement. There won't be any movement because it's on the tripod. So it means you're a bit more flexible to what you can do. Obviously, you can turn the shutter down, um, do, do the same thing, and we go up. 
we turn it down to say f8 right and i'll take another picture it won't be the field of depth won't be as sharp all the way through right so i'll take it now and here how long is actually exposing for it's going to be a lot less see it's finished now already you probably think you look at it oh it's probably not any different but when you come to if you put it on the computer you might find the edges of the books and stuff might not be quite as sharp but since it was on a tripod and there's no movement with a it doesn't really matter you what it depends on what you're trying to get out of it so i'm trying to get a nice texture on the edge of the books and my chap nice and sharp as well i've got a black background it doesn't have to be black but black's quite good um, even if it's just a couple of sheets of a4 paper um, they're cheap just to buy a bit of black a or if you've got a dark wall um, that would work just as well um, what you could also do is you could remove here um, you could have added a candle uh, obviously if you're at home you could always light it but be careful um, if you do that you want to keep it a little bit away from anything uh, you might have to rearrange the books into a different formation um, and then what you can do do the same thing again and then perhaps you could think about adding a bit of extra light to it from different angles you could just illuminate the back of it so the books are still dark um, but the object's a bit brighter you could use a torch and do the same job um, I mean if you've just got a new flash for Christmas lucky you and you've got one of these um, and you think, oh, what's this little bit of plastic for? Because they don't often tell you, do they, these things? And you just find it in there. They're actually a little stand. Uh, I must admit, the last one I bought never had one. Sometimes you have to buy them extra. And the idea is you can just stand, stand them up and you can move a flash around. Or, where we're here, we could just illuminate the books a little bit more and leave the man as is, or you could have a torch there. And then that way, you could have the rest of it really dark. You can make it darker, so you have a shorter, um, shorter uh, exposure time, uh, and then you could just illuminate the books and the figure. The next one is a bit more advanced with the same thing. So what I'm going to do, um, this is why manual is, uh, it just gives you a little bit more to play with. So my settings, what I've done at the moment, the camera is on F18, um, ISO 100, because I want the quality to be as good as possible. But also when you have a lower one, it's actually quite helpful as far as trying to get the other numbers down. Um, if you leave it on auto it won't work so you need to put it on 100 200 to do this and at the moment it's tenth of a second um, put it onto the live view so you can see on the back so obviously you can see what's there uh, i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm going to slow it down to two and a half seconds that should give me enough. So if I go back to live view, see, all right, here we go. Everything's a lot darker. Obviously, um, it's not darker there, right? So I've got a remote trigger. If you haven't got one, you can always use your timer. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trigger it off. Now I've got a torch, a little tiny torch, which I'm just going to go and highlight the edges of the books and try not to get it on the background if I can help it but if you keep moving it when you're doing it it will help right so I'm going to trigger it off now just quickly go just to highlight all the edges as you can see and what it's done it's highlighted all the edges of the books and the background's black you can make it darker still. Um, you can actually, I mean, there's quite a lot of light in here from doing the video in. Uh, I could just knock the light off altogether and you can see how dark it is now. Um, 
to work well in black and white as well as colour. Uh, but it's quite nice in colour because you've got the ambient light of the... So we do the same picture. I haven't changed the settings at all. So they're two and a half seconds. Uh, ISO 100 and uh, F18. Right, so I'm going to use the rope trigger again. Or you could use the timer. Right, get the torch out. Just quickly highlight the edges. You could, right? And you see the colour difference. I actually, I think I prefer it with a little bit more light in there. So if you actually wanted to do the same thing, but highlighted for longer, uh, all you'd need, I'm going to turn the light back on so you can see me. <laughs> oh, that's better. Um, what you do is actually do it for a longer period of time. Um, Another interesting one you can do with books is uh, obviously if you've got an old paperback book um, I mean after you read them I don't know about you but we end up with a big pile of them and they end up either going to the charity shop or you put them away and they um, it's not going to do any damage to them uh, what we're going to do is um, find a nice word on the page uh, there's one sorcery right I've got candlestick Right, and what I'm going to do is just rub over where the, the word sorcery is. Right, you can't even see it. So, and then I'm going to get some water. You could use a straw or whatever you got, you could find, and put a couple of drops of water just over where the wax is. Uh, And it will highlight, it will bubble on the top. Right. And then you can close up picture of that, filling the whole page with just that word highlighted. Uh, I'll leave you with some more pictures I've taken and ideas um, what you can do. Hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.